Hey, what's up, Lightbulb Joe here. Today we are going to discuss Season 3, Part A of MTV's original show, Teen Wolf. This came out June 13th, 2013. This is the first season that I actually saw as it aired on Moon Days, Mondays. That, that's what we called Moon Days. So, um, different group of friends. I uh, binged 1 and 2 right before I started 3 with a group of friends, with a different group of friends. Um, so this is the first season that I saw live. So every Monday starting June 13th, 2013. That's when, one after another. So this is, uh, part A is 12 episodes long. Part B is 12 episodes long. So it's two completely different stories, which coincide. 3B is stemming off of 3A, obviously. And 3A stemmed off of 2. So we know at the end of 2, the Alpha Pack is coming to Beacon Hills. Boyd and Erica are somewhere. So we find out where Boyd and Erica are. They've been held up in uh, Beacon Hills First National Bank this entire time. Last four months. It's been a four month time jump. And why are the Alphas keeping them there? What's what's going on? Why is there another werewolf in there? Well, that other werewolf happens to be Cora Hale, Derek Hale's younger sister, who everybody thought was dead, but she's not, um, as all good Hales are. So what's important about this season is, yes, you have the Alpha Pack dynamic of being the antagonists for Scott and his pack, his friends, but the Dirac, who is a evil version of a druid, um is another focal point of an antagonist. What's up with the Duroc? Why is the Duroc in Beacon Hills? What's up with the emissaries being druids uh, coinciding with Celtic mythology? So season two, we had a lot of uh, South American mythology with the Canima. Now we have some Celtic mythology with the druids, the fivefold knot, all that stuff, the different sacrifices to be made to the Nemeton, which is this, you know, celestial tree, basically, which is a stump at this point, but it gives it power within sacrifices to then become the beacon it is to draw the supernatural creatures back to Beacon Hills, hence the name. So that's the plan. The Duroc, we learn as the story progresses, is the teacher Jennifer, who was known as Julia at some point, or Julie, uh, she was an emissary to Kali, the Alpha, and her pack. Kali had killed her entire pack, thought she killed Julia, did not. She became then Druid turned to Duroc, evil druid. And so now the sacrifices must continue. So there's three virgins, there's three uh, guardians, there's three uh, warriors, things, right? Stuff is happening. In the process of this, Lydia is almost killed by the Duroc. We learn that she's a banshee. That's why she can find all these dead people. That's why she can scream and know that death is coming and know these certain things. The pivotal episode of this season is... Uh, Six, episode six, Motel California. That is the most talked about episode amongst us Teen Wolf fans. Every and anytime you ask someone though, what's your favorite episode? Motel California. It is it's it's its own story. It's its own co cohesive story from beginning to end. It is so poignant. It it changed the course of Teen Wolf. That episode, when Styles grabs the flare out of Scott's hand in the puddle of gasoline and he says, Scott, you're my brother. Um it just changed everything. Changed everything. Cried. I still cry to this day. All these years later, I still have tears. At the very end, when Scott looks at all his friends and, and he says, you know, I have my friends. Cry. All the time. It, it's just such an emotional moment, but it, it brings different poignant points. Having this cohesive story, having these cohesive plot points. It's it's very important noting the different points between Danny and Ethan, the twins, Aiden and Ethan coming into the mix, why the Alpha Pack is doing their thing. The background of Deucalion's character being the alpha of the alphas, his history with Gerard, the twisted revenge of that, the Duroc's twisted revenge to get revenge on Deucalion. Revenge. It's it's what this is all about. But to have Scott Allison and Styles having to submerge themselves in the cold water to kill themselves, to, to find the Nemeton, to find their parents as the sacrifices of the parental slash guardian figures, to then come back 16 hours later to have Lydia... Deaton and Isaac say you've been gone for 16 hours. Deaton's saying that darkness is going to be around your heart, leading into plot points of season three. So having Daniel Sharman's character of Isaac come into the fold, very cool. Having Boyd come back for a brief moment, very cool. Unfortunately, he was he was killed. Cora's character was very cool. Introduction, Erica was killed, unfortunately. A lot of stuff happened very quick, but it, it's such a beautiful interwoven piece. I couldn't find fault in it because it all checked off itself you know who almost hit scott in the car the very first episode it was allison and her mom like it all comes back to itself so miss morell being deaton's sister both of them being different emissaries to different packs the plot points of talia hale leading the packs back in the day like we get the backstory that we needed and it's important moving forward about the interwoven plots what happens next of course my question is still what happened to danny jeff davis says he graduated 
before everyone else, say la vie. But what happens to Danny? Danny's very important in this season and uh, part three B as well. So on to season four. Let's see if the plot points continue to be awesome. <laughs> Mucho mahalo.